Hey guys, Janet with Crafting It Up and Creations coming at you today with some Dollar Tree Summer Decor DIY. This is just some ideas that I've had brewing in my head of some summer decor, kind of beach theme, nautical theme, different type of things. This is part one of two videos that I will do. I did try to split this up because this video is about 20 or so minutes long and I don't want to bore you to death, but this is kind of the overview and I'm going to show you uh, the different ways that I did make all these. They come out so good. And I'll list um, the supplies out that I'm using on these and everything so that you can recreate it or find other things that you could even use in its place. I tried to make everything kind of look like it was sandy and like it was at the beach and just super cute all the way around. And this is in my living room right now. This is a dry sink that I got, got off of Facebook, one of the yard sale pages. And I painted it with chalk paint and waxed it and kind of distressed it to make it look a little aged. And there's my hope as an anchor for the soul. I will link the video to that down in the description below if you'd like to see how I made that. And then this is just kind of an overview. So here we go. We're going to start out with the bikini top that you can buy at the Dollar Tree. It looks like the little seashells. They also have the coconuts, but I got the seashells. And some model magic. Which, at the Dollar Tree, they do sell clay. You can buy the... Um, I think it's eight or ten sticks of clay and there is a white one in there and you could use that just as well as you could this air dry clay. I just already happen to have it on hand. So I'm going to throw all that away and then I'm going to take a little bit of this clay and I'm going to put it inside these holes so that the holes aren't kind of just sticking out there and, and where you don't really see them as well. You kind of have to look for them. And I mess around with this a good bit just to make sure that I get the holes covered and that it's pretty flat. And as you can see, that's what I did. And I do this for all six holes. And I'm actually going to do this for two sets to make the little votive holders that go in the middle of this. And then I have several different buckets that I got from the Dollar Tree. These look like um, you can make sandcastles with them, but they already look like a sandcastle on the outer edge. So I removed the um, handle on that one. And here's just a smaller one. I have a, quite a few of these others. You, If you can't find these at your Dollar Tree, you can get them at Family Dollar or Dollar General as well. They all look the same. And I did use some Goo Gone and sprayed it on there to get the stickers off of these. But I chose several different ones and they're all different colors and it doesn't matter because I'm gonna use this satin almond Krylon paint to go over top of them. And it's really pretty. It's kind of like the sand color and I just wanted it to be that tan color. And I also found this one definitely is from the Dollar Tree. It's a little blue sand castle. I'm gonna use this fishing net and I'm only gonna use a piece of it. Dollar Tree now does have the seashells that have the variety seashells in their pack for a dollar. It's not quite that many. These here are only the, um, the one shell in both of these and one's white and the other one has some ones that have some color in them. But I have run into some other Dollar Trees that have the different type of shells in all of them. And then I've got a package of the tan sand from the Dollar Tree. And it goes really well with that satin almond paint. Now this is goof off, not goo gone, sorry. It's heavy duty adhesive remover. And then I have Valspar sandstone that kind of gives a little bit of texture. And then there is Rust-Oleum. And I'm going to show the colors here now. This one is actually Caribbean sand. And this one is Ancient Ruins. 
And then I have one other one that's a little bit darker than those. And it is Desert Bisque. And these are great just for adding a little bit of texture to that other satin paint. So I also have Jute Rope. It was a dollar a roll. I got this at the Target Dollar Spot. And then I have this bottle that I got from the Dollar Tree, and I'm thinking of using it for like a message in a bottle. I don't use it in this video though, but I did want to show you different ones that they have. So stay tuned for part two. But this is really cool. Um, just will be good. And then they also have some other ones at the Dollar Tree as well, if you can't find those, um, that you could also do message in a bottle with those. And on those, I put a clear spray on them to make them kind of look like they have glitter. And then I have this huge vase, flower vase. And this is the Clear Durable Top Coat by Rust-Oleum. It's a frosted pearl color, and it just barely gives this little um, sheen, just like the lid has, that kind of makes it look glittery over top of the bottle. And that's kind of what it looks like up close. It's beautiful. I just love adding it to just about anything. I also added it to the seashells. Now this is outside. I went out and I painted the grass along with the little sand castles. And I put that, um, it probably required a couple different coats. I just sprayed it twice and you can see I even had it run a little on that one. But it's not going to matter because I'm going to throw this textured spray over top of several of them. And look at that. It looks so good. It already looks kind of like sandy with that extra top coat over it. And here are my seashells. I put that um, frosted pearl finish over top of that. And here, I brought it inside. And doesn't that just look so good? I just love this. I think even without adding anything else to it, it looks good. And to get in between some of these places, um, it does take a couple coats. And here's the little pink one. There's the blue one. And so I pulled out the fix all that the adhesive that Dollar Tree has. I pulled out Mod Podge E6000. That's an antique matte color. Um, it's one that I've had for a while. As you can see, there's you know a good bit left in it. And there's that other cute little sandcastle look. So I tried a few different things with this. This is that brown or tan sand. Um, I even pulled out my glue gun and I cut just a little piece off of that corner so that I can kind of pour it over the areas that I'm gonna add glue to. Now I tried the glue gun, I tried the E6000, I did try something else to add just some sand texture and I wanted something at first that maybe dried quick you know like the glue gun and it worked okay but to me it just looked too um, you know it was too much to it and I thought I don't really like that so then I decided to go for the Mod Podge and the reason the Mod Podge even works a little bit better is that you can hit the little sand castle in several different areas. It's not gonna dry on you too quick. And then you can go through and add the sand to it. And it just gives it a little bit extra to these that just makes it look so good. And I am so pleased with that, how these turned out that if you don't love the beach, you probably aren't gonna love it. But if you do, you're gonna be like, oh my God, that is awesome. So I kind of at first even try to grab whatever extra sand that's down at the bottom. And this only goes for a little while and I'm like, oh heck, I'm just gonna pour it out. And I should have gotten a spoon. So your best bet if you start this, get you a spoon, spoon it up, throw it on there. I lined all the edges with the sand. And in the end, I decided that um, once I had enough sand in the bottom of the plate, especially for like those round ones, I just went along with the Mod Podge around the rim of it and then dunked it into the sand and that worked out really well too. And of course some of these are just too big for that but this castle is absolutely my favorite. I just love how it turned out. It just looks so good. Just the, the you know the sandstone 
spray that's on it, it just looks already sandy without the sand on it. So I go through and I just add Mod Podge wherever I think I want the sand to be. Because if it was out on the beach and you were making a sand castle, we all know it's never exactly perfect. And I just put it on there. And I tried to speed up through some of this a lot just so that you know you didn't have to watch every little bit, but I didn't want to take too much away from that. And I love lining these edges up of it. I almost built it up enough where you know you couldn't even tell the lip was there, but I was like, it doesn't matter. We already all know that it's a plastic sand castle anyway. But I build it up a little on the steps. I go around the um, doorway. I put a little bit on any of the little sanding blocks here and there. And I hot glued the shells to the side of it as well. But I just go all along and add some to it. Every little bit, I just kind of add it. There's no rhyme or reason, no wrong way, no right way. But like I say, the Mod Podge ended up being my favorite as far as, you know, where I could add it to. So then I go back and I do it with some of the others. And the good thing about even adding the sand to it is there is some imperfections to the plastic and you can cover that up really well with that. Now the little foam brush, I actually did get those from the Dollar Tree as well. They have foam ones and they have wood ones and you get like six or seven in a pack for a dollar. And I swear the foam brushes on these aren't any different from the ones that I get anywhere else, even from like a higher end craft store. I don't notice that much different because to me they're all pretty cheap. But for the purpose of this, it works, works wonderful. And so I slowly just kind of add sand to all of these. And I don't mean to bore you to death, but I kind of just like to show, um, you know, exactly what I kind of did with these. And then I'm going to go all the way around the bottom edge and then kind of put it down into that sand. I kind of just rake it in there. And I even add some shells to it. And um, I usually hot glue the shells down. That's pretty much what I did with those. And it worked out really well. This is a high temp glue gun, so I put it on the shell first and then put the shell down onto the, the plastic piece because I didn't want to melt it. But you know, towards the end of this, I finally figured out, hey, let's just dunk it in there and it'll go by so much faster. You live and learn. And that's one good thing about watching when somebody else does this is that you you say, oh, well, let me just do that from the get-go and that'll save me a few extra minutes even. Now, I just got back from the beach. I was gonna try to do this voiceover while I was there. Um, I did some of the editing to it and finished all that up, but it was really hard to find just a quiet room in that large beach house with my whole family there because my brother and my sister-in-law came and her, her mom and stepdad were there and my mom was there and my three kids and a friend and it was just hard to get a good quiet place to do this. So now I'm gonna take that jute rope and I'm gonna wrap it around this Dollar Tree flower vase. And I actually go all the way up it with the hot glue. I wasn't gonna do that at first, but I was afraid, you know, even if I, if I didn't, that it might move or whatever. So I ended up going all the way up. You probably really don't have to do that if you started out and put the hot glue just around the bottom edge to keep it from, you know, moving. It probably would be just fine. But I ended up going all the way up and I'll probably go up about maybe a fourth of the way up this vase with this cute jute rope. And I even still have some left over so I'm hoping to use it on a couple other things in my part two series.
All right, so I finished this up and then I'm gonna add some of the seashells to the outer sides of the jute rope as well. And I'm gonna use the hot glue gun, of course, to hold those in place. And if you can find the seashells at the Dollar Tree, that is definitely your best value. That big bag from Walmart was pretty expensive for the seashells and there are no really better seashells in that than the ones that I've gotten now from the Dollar Tree. So I've had both and I know. So I'll pour the remaining tan sand down into that cylinder. I'm going to add a, uh, one of the battery operated candles to that and one of the bigger shells. I'm going to um, hot glue that to the outside and then two of the longer like conch shells, I believe is what they're called, I put on the outside or on the outer sides. And I just thought it looked cute. I kind of played around with it a little bit to see which ones that I like the best on there. And I add those to that. And then the seashells, I kind of fidget around with those and I put one inside there and I hot glued that down. And one way or the other, they'll set up straight just like that if you, if you do it just right. Now this is the Champagne Pink. It's the Rust-Oleum Pearl Metallic. It's a paint and primer in one. And I also added the Pearl Mist to the seashells themselves. And it kind of gave those a, um, a real pretty look. These are votive holders from the Dollar Tree. They were glass, and I just painted them with that pink metallic spray. And I'm going to add the hot glue to the bottom of the glass. And then add that to that plastic shell. And you want to add it to the glass first. It kind of keeps it from melting that. And then I pick out a bunch of little shells to add all around the edges of that. And I don't glue them down or anything because I figure I'll end up putting these up for the summer. And I've got enough other stuff that I thought that maybe, just maybe, I wouldn't worry about busting the shells. And then the other two seashells, I did cut the strings off of those and I've covered them with that pearl mist um, and I'm just going to kind of throw them in as decoration with everything else. But that looks so pretty. I'm really pleased at how some of this stuff turned out. And this is the start where I first kind of put it down. I've got three of those placemats that the Dollar Tree sells. It just kind of made me think of beach theme anyway. I put up the fishing net in behind it. And then I've got these up on top. And I'm gonna add a candle to those in a little while just for you to see. And I don't know, I just think this turned out so cute. I just love it. And you can kind of tell where I use that air dry clay, but at least it's not just a hole there. And you still have to kind of get up right on it to see that. And in the end, I end up adding a few shells in the background. I'm gonna add some of those little stick decorations that the Dollar Tree has, cause they just make me think of the beach for whatever reason. Um, just to kind of decorate and I just kind of throw them everywhere and then I even run those wire LED lights in them and I'm gonna be able to light those up later you know when the lights are out there's my candles are inside there and it just came out so pretty and this is kind of just an overview of everything um, the finished product per se but I did buy a tiny little red pail from Five Below. I want to say I swear it was only a dollar for this, but you got the little red pail and some tiny tools. Like there's a rake, there's a sifter, um, there's a shovel, and then there's a small little crab that you can, you know, make, put sand in to put him in the um, 
make a mold of him per se. And I have those down there as well. You'll get to see those in just a minute. And it just kind of added to the playfulness of all this. There's a balloon holder with the palm tree from the Dollar Tree. Um, but it just really added to the whole set. So if you do like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you like videos like this, if you hit subscribe, that will let you know every time you log into your YouTube account whenever I post a new video. And of course, if you hit the bell, that'll send it to your smart device um, to let you know that a new one has been posted. I really enjoyed making this. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Again, thanks for watching. Thanks for stopping by my channel. I do appreciate it. Here's a view of it with the lights out and the glow of the LED lights and the candles, and it just looks so pretty. Again, guys, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for part two. Thanks so much. Y'all have a great day.